Now, when you live in a city and you take a shower or wash your dishes or flush a toilet, all of the water leaves your house and flows into a city sewer system, which transports all that wastewater to a sewer treatment plant. Around here, wastewater treatment is a very technical, very regulated, and very monitored process, which results in water that's clean enough to be released back into the watershed. Now, if you live in the country or in a part of the city where the sewer system doesn't reach, you're going to need your own system to process your own wastewater directly on your own property. And generally, this is known as a septic system. Yeah, I was just watching it. A minute ago, there were some bubbles coming out right out of here. It's sque This is the septic tank underneath that tile, and it's squeezing out and coming out here. There's the main out, there's one of the exits from the house. There's another one over there. And here's the tank. So it's kind of looking like we're going to have to just destroy this whole patio. On this house, the existing sewer system starts with the septic tank, which is located directly under this patio. We did a repair on this system last winter, but that was really just to limp us along until we could get to this point, where the entire system could be replaced. In this video, you're going to watch us install an entirely new system on this little old house. The old one lasted 70 years, which is not bad but it's time for an upgrade. This tank was originally installed in the 1950s and it's made of steel. In some cases, the new septic tank might go right into the same hole that the old one came out of. But that's not what's happening here today. This new tank is going to be located about 50 feet away on the other side of the lawn. A lot of times, this work is done with a backhoe, which works really well. But these more modern excavators are much more efficient for a job like this. The ability for the operator to swivel 360 degrees and move himself with his own tracks in any direction results in a much faster dig. The machine is also smaller. It has a smaller footprint, which reduces the overall impact on the yard. When you combine a mini excavator like this for the digging and a skid steer for moving the dirt, you've got a very efficient and productive combination. And as far as this crew goes, you've seen them before on our videos and you ought to know by now how I feel about their work.
the capacity of the new septic tank, and therefore the size of the hole that has to be dug, is dictated by our local building department. They determine the required size by the size of the house. And interestingly, it's not the square footage of the house, it's not even the number of bathrooms in the house that they're looking at, but it's the number of bedrooms. This is how they get an idea of how many people might be living in the house, which is really what dictates the capacity of the new system. The purpose of the tank, which you'll get a good look at in a minute, is to provide a place for bacteria to digest the solids and allow the affluent or dirty water to run out into these two shallow trenches and then percolate down through the soil and then be evaporated up through the grass. To keep the trenches clear, this system is utilizing what is known as infiltrator chambers. The bottom of the trench is measured and graded very carefully, in our case to 18 inches deep, so all of the affluent can spread out evenly over the entire drain field. And then the chambers interlock over the top of the trench and are carefully backfilled, ready for inspection. Around here, using perforated pipe and washed rock is also a common, really perhaps more common, way to do this. The goal is to maintain a space where the affluent can flow freely that won't get quickly plugged up with dirt or tree roots. This drain field was engineered by officials at our county. They came to the site several weeks ago, well in advance actually, and did some soil testing in a special test hole that I had dug for them to determine how well our soil drains and thus how many lineal feet of drain field are needed for this particular system. They determined that 200 feet of drain field with the bottom of the trench 18 inches deep was the right design for this location. Now once everything's installed, they're going to come back to inspect what we did. So for now, the trenches are only backfilled enough to hold these chambers in place. This way, the inspector can see the tops of the chambers and know that the depth is correct.
Now that this drain field work is done, let's look back at the tank and the pump. Okay, so this component is called the biotube, and it sits down inside the septic tank, and it has these holes here that are above the sludge layer, and then here is the filter. Pull this out. Plastic filter. Okay. And this separates any solids that are in your tank from the pump. That's gonna pump it to the drain field. See that? So the pump slides down into this side. And so the, the effluent that goes through there is filtered before it gets to the pump. So you're not pumping solids to your drain field. So there, there's a little channel at the bottom that it moves over into yes. this. Yes. There's a channel and a little float. Oh, right. So it goes through the filter and then it goes over to here into the pump side. Wow. In this case, we're using a two compartment tank, so we shouldn't even have any solids on that side anyhow. So if you have issues, you can like yank that whole the deal whole out of there. Can lift lift out. This is the pump. It's similar to a pump that'd be in the bottom of a well, and that slides down in here. And then we have this is the hose and valve assembly that attach to this, and this is all inside the riser, and this pipe. Drills a hole, we drill a hole through the side of the riser, and this is what pumps the effluent from the septic tank to the drain field. And then since pumps turn on and off and they kind of jar the pipe, you put a piece of a spa hose on the outside of the tank before you hook the rest of your PVC up. Huh. And that just it just gives a little bit of a soft buffer yeah. as, the, as the pump turns on and off so it doesn't break your fittings. This is called the float tree. It sits down inside here with the it clips right into the side of the filter here. So basically you have a high level alarm. Like if something goes bad with your pump, it's gonna trigger the alarm. Low level alarm, so you don't burn up your pump. And then this is the operating one that turns the pump on and off. So all of those go to this splice box. So you have your three wires and you have your wire for your pump. This sits inside the riser and all the wires go into here, and then from here they go to the control panel, huh. which is here, which will be mounted on a post by the tank. So if your alarm starts blaring, push the button so it's not annoying until you can get somebody out here to see what's going on. Man, it's a pretty job. slick system. It's made by a Renko right here in, in Douglas County in huh. Sutherland. They make a good product. They sell them all over the world. It's amazing that they're right here. Huh. Too bad we can't buy directly from them. This is the septic tank that's going in, and as you can see, it's made of concrete, which is, by the way, the greatest building material on planet Earth. You can also get septic tanks that are made of steel or plastic or fiberglass, and each of them has their benefits. But concrete tanks like this have been around for a really long time and are really tried and true. This tank holds a thousand gallons and it has walls that are over four inches thick. The only real downside to these tanks is that brother, they are heavy. And in our area, they're actually a little hard to get a hold of. The precast manufacturer only does deliveries to our town one day a week so the contractors in this area have to plan and schedule their work very carefully. So the wastewater flows out of the house, already pretty deep in the ground, and then into the tank in a sewer pipe that slopes at a rate of about a quarter of an inch per foot. This means that by the time our sewer pipe reaches the tank on this job, the pipe's almost five feet deep which puts the top of the tank about three feet into the ground. These risers, as they're called, or openings, are provided so that there will always be access to the tank for pumping and maintenance. If the tank was closer to the house, you wouldn't need these because the tank wouldn't be so deep in the ground. There's really no limit to how deep these things can go, but the cost certainly skyrockets 
the farther and the deeper you've got to dig. This 4x4 post is going to secure, in place, the control panel, which you can think of as a little electrical panel. Now you might have noticed that Brian dropped a small pump into the tank, which will pump the affluent out of the tank and into the drain field. Now the ideal situation is a gravity system, where the drain field sits at a lower elevation than the tank, and good old reliable gravity will just keep the effluent moving from the tank into the drain field. No muss, no fuss. But for us, you notice that our drain field is actually several feet higher than the outlet on the tank. So the effluent must be pumped. And this control panel is what switches that pump on and off to keep the level inside the tank where it needs to be. Little cheesy, but yeah, but it's higher than the right. Okay, so what I've done here is is this uh, piece of schedule 40 inch and a quarter PVC coming from the tank is pressurized, and so when it comes into the distribution box, I put a 90 on it so it shoots it down instead of shooting it into this one line because this particular system is equal distribution, meaning each leech line is the exact same elevation, so and that's specified by the county. And so the effluent needs to be able to go into each line at the same time. And so that's why I put that 90 on there and it keeps it from blowing out. Um, and then everything from this point on is just gravity. These two lines have to be set dead level and they flow to the infiltrator chambers where it drops six inches down to an open trench all the way down. And this system, what did we have? 212 feet Two, yeah. of, uh, of leech lines was the requirement. Perfect. So that's it for this part, other than uh, adding the tone wire. I'll put that in a little bit later. Yeah. The last major thing to happen is to hook the system up to the house. In our case, this means cutting off our main drain lines and then hooking them up to the new tank. The old drains on this house are cast iron, and so Brian is making this connection with a fern co fitting, which is basically a rubber coupling with hose clamps, stainless steel hose clamps. Someday in the future, this house might have you know, new drain lines installed. I mean, who knows, right? And so Brian is stubbing up another pipe right here so that if the house gets new sewer lines ever, we can easily attach right here instead of having to dig up the patio once again. I hope you've enjoyed watching this system go in. There are lots of different ways to do septic systems in different parts of the country and different parts of the world do them very differently. So it may not be possible for you to do a system quite like this. That being said, whatever system you put in, it will probably follow a lot of the same principles, and it will probably, hopefully, 
accomplish the same goal. Not like you know, super hard, but yeah, I'm gonna get a screwdriver. One last thing to mention here is that the old septic tank has to be totally disabled. This means either tear it out or fill it with concrete, and that's the option we went with here. So after Brian finished with the septic install, he prepped the back patio for concrete and also ripped out the driveway and all the sidewalks in the front of this house and then prepped for that concrete also, including the underground work, some electrical chases, that sort of thing. If you enjoyed this video, you might check out that one as well and you'll get the full scope of what Reynolds Excavation got done in just a few days. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Mm -hmm.